Hi everyone, and you are welcome to this lecture, Python Lists Functions. In this lecture, we are going to learn about some useful and built-in functions in Python that usually are used with lists. This lecture has only a code session, so directly I will move to PyCharm IDE, and after that, I will end up this lecture by a quick summary. So let's get started. Actually, there are a lot of functions that can be used with lists, but I choose the most common one to be explained in this lecture. First of all, let me assume I have the following list, which has 4, 20, and so on, and its name list1. The first function that I want to talk about is len, and this function will take object, which could be a list in this case, and returns an integer, and this function will determine how many items a list has. So in this case, we have 10 items. If you count them, you will find them 10. But if you use function like len, directly will give you the result. And if you run and print this result, I will get 10 as you see. The second function that I want to talk about is max function. Max, it's a function that take an iterable. And later on, we will talk exactly about what is the meaning of iterable. But what you have to know right now, list one is considered an iterable. And it will return a value. And this value could be integer or float. And usually this value is the maximum number in the list so if i say result equal to max list one and i print this result what i will get is 20 so if you compare all of these numbers you will find that 20 is the maximum number the next function that i want to talk about is mine and mine is similar to max but it will do the opposite job it will find the minimum number so if we try to find the minimum number in this list we will find it's minus two and we can do this directly using mine function if I print the result of this function, I will get minus two and it's very straightforward function. The next function is sum and sum it's a function that take an iterable, which is a list in this case, and it will returns a value which could be integer or float. And this value is the sum of the list elements. So you have to keep in mind that you have to put all of the items as numbers in this case, otherwise you will get an error. And if you want to use this function, it's very simple. We say result equal to sum list one and then i will print the result and i will get 63 so if you try to add up these numbers together you will have 63 now the next function is append and append is a function that take one item as an input which is object and this function will add this item or element at the end of the list so in other word append append an item at the end of the list let's see an example to understand the idea so i'm going to print list one first then i will say list one dot append 40 then i will print list one again after i have appended this value run as you see i get list one exactly the same except the last item which has been appended using append function the next function is extend and extend it's a function that take an iterable any type of iterable and it add the elements of that iterable to the end of the current list. So let me show you an example to understand what is the meaning of extend. Let me assume now I have another list two, which is S T Q D F A in addition to my original list one, which has these values. Now, if I print list one before I doing extend, then I say list one dot extend list two, then I print list one again. Let's see what we will have. We will see that before applying extend, I get the original list, but after that, I get a new list which has all the element of the original list with all the element of the second list. So you can say extend, it's exactly the same like concatenation operators, which mean it will concat two lists together. Also, you will note that it's a concatenation, not appending. What I mean by this, if I replace extend by append right now, and I run the code, the second list become a single item inside the first list. Not all the element inside the second list have been appended to the first list. So be careful from this. So when you want to do concatenation, you have to use extend. But when you want to add the list as a single item inside the other list, you have to use append. The next function is remove and remove it's a function to remove a value from a list and usually it remove the first occurrence of that value if this item occurs more than one time inside the list so let's see an example i will assume that i have the same list again which is list one and i want to remove one you will note here that i have only one inside 
my list so this one will be removed so let me say list one dot remove one and run you will see now I have the same list but without the element one which was between minus two and twenty so to summarize remove helped me to remove the first occurrence of the item inside the list the next function that I want to talk about is insert and insert it's similar to append append helped me to append an item to the end of the list but sometimes I want to add an item to the list but I want to specify the position in which I want to add this item and in order to do that you have to use insert so insert will take the index which means the location in which you want to add the item and the object itself which means the object that you want to add so let me show you an example of insert so I will print list1 before then I will say list1.insert for q which means I want to insert in the fourth location the letter q and then I will print list1 after this insertion let me run as you will see here if I count 0 one two three four so in the fourth location now i have a queue and this queue come because i use insert function here with the list one list the next function i want to show you is reverse and reverse it's a very simple function which simply reverses the order of the list and this function doesn't take any parameter so let me show you list one before and i after apply reverse function so if i run so before that this is my original list and after I do reverse you will see that 4 which was the first item becomes the last item 20 come to here 6 come to here and so on so it's a very simple function to reverse the order of the items and be careful that reverse it's a function that update the original list so it will not create a copy update that copy and return the result which means the original list will not be updated but it updates the original lists and this is very important information to keep in your mind one more function which is index and index it's very easy function it will help you to know the index of the first occurrence of element inside the list this function will take value which means the item that you want to find its index and also you can specify the start and stop which means the range in the list that you want to look for by default it's a start from zero which means the first element and the stop is the last index but you can make the search range smaller if you wish to do that let's see an example about index to understand first of all i will say s index equal to list one dot index 20 which means i need to know the index in which the item 20 occurs if i say run I will find that 20 number index is 1. Why 1? If I come to my list and count 0, 1, so I will find 20 in this case. Now let's try an example in which I want to specify the range, like this one. Here, if I say list1.index20, but I say I want to search, let me say not 1, 2. In the range 2 to 4, which means 0, 1, 2, so from here to here, inside these three elements, and run. I will get a value error and this error say 20 is not in the list and here you have to be careful not in the whole list but in the range that I specify here by using 2 and 4 start and stop and that's it so index just return the index of an item inside a list one more function which is very easy it's count function and from its name this function returns the number of elements with the specified value it takes one argument which is value and it will return how many times this item occurs inside the list let's see a simple example about this let me say I want to count how many 20 I have in this list in this case I have 220 let's check that by using count function so I will say number count equal to list one dot count 20 and then I will print the result and as you see 20 count is 2 because I have exactly 220 inside the list the function before the last function is pop and pop it's a function help me to remove element from a list by default pop function will remove the last item so each time you use pop you will remove the last item but also pop allows you to pass index in other words you can specify the item location that you want to remove so by default it removes the last element but also you can specify the location if you would like to do that let's see an example let's say that I'm going to print list1 before and then I will use pop function 
and then I will print list again. As you will see, this is my original list. And because I use pop, it will remove the last item, which is 20. So I will get the new list without the last item. Also, let me show you that if I say item equal and I print item run, you will see that I got 20. So pop not only remove an item, but also it returns the item that has been removed. The second example that I want to show you, it's about deleting an item, but after we specify the item location. So in this case, I specify two. Let me run. As you will see here, 426 and so on. In the second one, I have 420 minus one. So six disappear because here I specify explicitly the location of the item that I want to delete. So the item in location number two has been deleted. Now let's see the last function. And this is a very simple function, which is clear. And the clear it's a function that removes all the element from the list. So let me show you how it works. It's quite easy. So if I print list one before, and then I apply clear function, and then I print list one again, you will see that this is my original list. And after that, I get an empty list. Why empty list? Because I deleted all the items from this list. And this is the last function in this collection of functions that I have chosen to explain for you. What you have noted from these collections of function that for sum of function, I say function name, and then I pass the list inside the arguments, like for example, len function. And for some function, I say list dot, and then I call the function. The difference here is related to OOP concepts which is out of the scope of this course. For now, you have to know how to use the function from the documentation. But in the future, when you become more advanced and you understand OOP concept, you will understand which way to use to call the function correctly. Should you put list as an argument inside the function or should you say list dot and then the function name? And that's all for this code session. Now, my friend, please refer to the file Python lists functions appendix in which you will find all of the functions that have been discussed in this lecture have been summarized. Also, please refer to Python lists functions challenges in which you will find some challenges to practice what you have learned in this lecture. Thank you very much for your time. And if you are available, join me in the next lecture.